Picture this, a dimly lit room, the soft hum of a projector, and the unmistakable scent of buttered popcorn lingering in the air. As you settled into your seat, the flickering black and white images on the screen transported you to the dust-choked plains of the 1930s Oklahoma. It was your first encounter with the 1940 cinematic masterpiece, The Grapes of Wrath, a film that left an indelible mark on your soul. In those hushed moments, you journeyed alongside the Jode family, their faces etched with the harshness of the Great Depression, their hopes as fragile as the American dream itself. You felt the biting wind that whipped through the barren fields, and your heart ached as you witnessed their struggles, their resilience, and their unyielding spirit in the face of adversity. Perhaps it was the hauntingly beautiful score that stirred your emotions, or the impeccable performances that brought the characters to life. Maybe it was that poignant moment when Ma Jode uttered those unforgettable words, We're the people that live. They ain't gonna wipe us out. We're the people we go on. Now, let's delve into some fascinating random facts about this cinematic gem, shedding light on its creation, impact, and enduring legacy. So, grab your popcorn once more as we journey back to the Dust Bowl era and explore the untold stories behind The Grapes of Wrath. The Grapes of Wrath, a 1940 film directed by John Ford, is a cinematic masterpiece adapted from John Steinbeck's novel of the same name. Set during the Great Depression, it follows the Jode family as they are displaced from their Oklahoma farm during the Dust Bowl and embark on a treacherous journey to California in search of a better life. The film is a powerful portrayal of the hardships faced by migrant workers and the exploitation they endured. Henry Fonda delivers a remarkable performance as Tom Jode, the film's iconic protagonist, who becomes a symbol of resilience in the face of adversity. Ma Jode, played by Jane Darwell, is another memorable character, embodying the strength and determination of the matriarch in a time of crisis. Ford's directorial style captures the stark beauty of the American landscape, while also highlighting the harsh realities of the era. The film's cinematography, combined with its evocative score, creates a compelling atmosphere that draws viewers into the Jode family's struggles. The Grapes of Wrath left an indelible mark on popular culture, becoming a classic example of socially conscious filmmaking. Its depiction of economic hardship and social injustice continues to resonate with audiences, making it a timeless exploration of the human spirit's endurance in the face of adversity. In 1941, the film won two Academy Awards, including Best Director for John Ford. It remains a poignant and relevant commentary on the enduring struggle for dignity and survival in the midst of economic hardship. In 1940, John Ford's cinematic adaptation of John Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath took the silver screen by storm. But behind its powerful portrayal of the Jode family's struggle during the Great Depression lay a series of intriguing behind-the-scenes battles. While adhering to the production code of the era, which aimed to regulate the content of Hollywood films, the Grapes of Wrath faced numerous challenges. Suggestions were made to alter or eliminate several aspects of the script. Among them was a caution against characterizing Millie as insane, reflecting concerns about stigmatizing mental health. Lines related to Rasasharn's pregnancy were rewarded for more conservative sensibilities, changing Tom's teasing remark to a more euphemistic, well, I see him gonna be an uncle soon. Even a toilet humor scene involving grandma was excised. The filmmakers were urged to avoid specific references to Chilair County, California, known for its harsh treatment of migrant workers. Moreover, the film was advised not to depict Tom killing the deputy in self-defense. The Grapes of Wrath wasn't just a cinematic triumph. Its pro-union stance resonated with the socio-political climate of the time. However, this position didn't come without consequences. Both John Steinbeck and John Ford found themselves under investigation by Congress during the McCarthy Red Scare era, accused of harboring pro-communist sympathies. Despite these challenges, The Grapes of Wrath has stood the test of time. In 2007, the American Film Institute ranked it as the 23 greatest movie of all time. Its enduring legacy continues to captivate audiences and remains a testament to the resilience of art in the face of adversity. In 1940, amidst the golden era of Hollywood, a pivotal moment emerged in the career of a budding star, Henry Fonda. Fonda, still striving for his breakthrough in the movie industry, had been reluctant to tie himself to a studio contract, longing for the freedom to select his roles independently. 
However, fate intervened when the coveted part of Tom Joad in the Grapes of Wrath beckoned him. Recognizing it as the role of a lifetime, Fonda hesitantly inked a seven-year deal with 20th Century Fox. Producer Daryl F. Zanuck, well aware of Fonda's desire for the role, played a shrewd hand. He hinted that the role might go to another leading actor, Tyrone Power, leaving Fonda with no choice but to plead his case. Zanuck, a master of negotiation, used this opportunity to seal the deal, convincing Fonda to commit to seven pictures with the studio. This maneuver not only secured Fonda's place as Tom Joad, but also tied him firmly to 20th Century Fox. What unfolded on screen was nothing short of iconic. Fonda's portrayal of Tom Joad resonated deeply with audiences and critics alike. It was a performance that captured the essence of John Steinbeck's character in ways that left the author himself enamored. Steinbeck and Fonda's friendship blossomed during the making of the film, and their bond endured beyond the movie set. Fonda's tribute to the author, a reading at Steinbeck's funeral, marked the profound connection between actor and writer. The Grapes of Wrath not only etched its place in cinematic history, but also defined a pivotal moment in Henry Fonda's career. The movie's enduring legacy serves as a testament to the power of storytelling and the lengths to which an actor would go to bring a character to life. In the annals of Hollywood, this chapter stands as a testament to the intricate dance of ambition, talent, and studio politics that shaped the silver screen during the 1940s. This is a glimpse into the world behind one of the most celebrated films of its time, where stars like Fonda and visionaries like Steinbeck converged, leaving an indelible mark on cinematic history. Henry Fonda's iconic hat from the Grapes of Wrath, a symbol of friendship and nerves conquered in the annals of cinematic history, few films have left an indelible mark as profound as the 1940 classic, The Grapes of Wrath. As the Dust Bowl era unfolded on screen, so did a narrative of resilience and familial bonds that would echo through generations. Yet, behind the scenes, a lesser-known tale of friendship and personal conquest weaved itself into the fabric of this cinematic masterpiece. Henry Fonda, who portrayed the determined Tom Joad, wore more than just the character's struggles on his shoulders. The iconic hat he sported throughout the film became a silent witness to both cinematic history and a heartwarming connection. Fonda's portrayal was hailed as transformative, and his embodiment of Tom Joad earned him not only accolades, but a lifelong companion. The hat, a seemingly mundane prop, took on a life of its own. Fonda, whose nerves threatened to overshadow his performance, found an unexpected source of strength in the unlikeliest of places. Enter Jane Withers, an eight-year-old co-star, and an old friend from a bygone theatrical production. In a serendipitous turn of events, Withers, then a young girl, held Fonda's hand and uttered a prayer that would quell his stage fright. Little did they know that this gesture would forge a friendship that endured beyond the confines of the silver screen. Decades later, as Fonda's cinematic journey came to a close, the hat found itself in the hands of Jane Withers once more. The same hands that had steadied Fonda's nerves during that early production now cradled the tangible symbol of their enduring bond. As Fonda passed away in 1982, the hat became a poignant reminder of a connection that had stood the test of time. John Steinbeck, the mastermind behind the original novel, praised the film adaptation and Henry Fonda's portrayal. His words, believe my own words, captured the sentiment that Fonda's performance breathed life into his characters beyond his own imagination. The Grapes of Wrath etched itself into the pages of film history, and within its frames, a hat became more than just a costume piece. It became a testament to the power of camaraderie and the resilience of the human spirit. As Jane Withers held the hat, she held not just an artifact, but a testament to a friendship that had transcended generations and stage fright. And so, in the echoes of a bygone era, the hat lives on, a silent witness to a story of nerves conquered, friendships kindled, and a film that continues to resonate. The Dust Bowl era may have faded, but the legacy of the Grapes of Wrath remains as enduring as the bond between two kindred spirits. Investigating the Grapes of Wrath, unearthing the realities of the 1940 classic in the annals of cinematic history, few films resonate as powerfully as 1940's The Grapes of Wrath. Adapted from John Steinbeck's Pulitzer Prize-winning novel, this cinematic masterpiece directed by John Ford unflinchingly depicted the plight of Dust Bowl migrants during the Great Depression. Yet, beneath its surface lies a little-known revelation that lends even more depth to its narrative. 
One scene in particular, set in a humble diner, features a truck driver whose joke is tragically left unfinished, interrupted by an urgent directive to cheese it. The joke, however, finds its complete version within Steinbeck's literary work. It revolves around a schoolboy arriving late to class, explaining his delay with a tale involving livestock breeding. While the movie merely hints at the humor, the original joke showcases Steinbeck's penchant for blending wit with poignant themes. The film's significance extends beyond its storytelling. A shoestring budget of $750,000 by today's standards of pittance for a production of such ambition was allocated. Despite financial constraints, Ford's direction, and Greg Tolan's cinematography combined to create an enduring visual tapestry that enriched the narrative's emotional gravitas. Even before cameras rolled, producer Daryl F. Zanuck took extraordinary measures to ascertain the accuracy of Steinbeck's portrayal of migrant camps. Dispatching undercover investigators, he aimed to debunk any exaggerations. To his astonishment, the investigators found Steinbeck had actually downplayed the dismal conditions, shedding light on the magnitude of the issue. As we revisit the Grapes of Wrath, we unearth hidden layers that enrich its legacy. The truncated joke, the budgetary limitations, and the producer's investigative diligence intertwine to amplify the film's impact. Its portrayal of human resilience in the face of adversity remains timeless, a poignant reminder of the power of cinema to illuminate the truths of our shared history. Investigating the Grapes of Wrath, unearthing the realities of the 1940 classic. As we part ways, I extend an invitation, a journey into the annals of cinematic history, a rendezvous with the poignant tale of humanity etched in black and white, the grapes of wrath. As the reels of time unwind, I implore you to take a moment, a reverie, and traverse through the dust-laden roads that win through the very heart of despair and hope as portrayed in this timeless masterpiece. Let the resonance of Henry Fonda's portrayal of Tom Joad echo within you, a symbol of resilience in the face of adversity. Allow the stark landscapes to unfold not just as a backdrop, but as a character, a mirror reflecting the struggles, dreams, and tenacity of a generation ensnared by the throes of the Great Depression. As you reflect upon the Jode family's odyssey, consider the mirroring of their hardships with the ever-evolving tapestry of our own lives. For just as the dust bowl clouds obscured the sun, our challenges often threaten to dim our spirits, yet it is the human spirit's unwavering persistence that prevails. What facets of this tapestry resonate most with you? Is it the relentless pursuit of a better life, the bittersweet camaraderie amidst adversities, or the enduring power of kinship that ignites your thoughts? I encourage you to share your musings, your connections, your own journeys in parallel with the Jones. Let the dialogue flow like the winds of change across the plains. In the boundless expanse between celluloid frames and human experience, the Grapes of Wrath remains a testament to the strength of the human soul. So, let your memories, your contemplations, and your emotions take flight in the fertile soil of discussion, for stories are seeds that grow into the garden of shared wisdom. As we draw this narrative to a close, I extend my gratitude for your time, your engagement, and your willingness to embark upon this introspective expedition. May your thoughts be as fertile as the land that binds the Jode's fate, and your insights as vibrant as the dreams they clung to. Remember, the echoes of this cinematic voyage are but a reflection of our collective journey, reminding us that history, in all its hues, shapes the contours of our existence. Until we meet again to explore the boundless realms of imagination, and thoughts stay reflective, stay engaged, and continue to thread the tapestry of connection through the stories that resonate with us all. With appreciation for your company and curiosity.